Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. First of all, I've been sitting here talking to my camera for at least the past 10 minutes. I was on the last part of this Team Mom OG Season 8 Episode 3 review. I was at the end. I was on Corey and Cheyenne, and I looked to see how long I had been talking. I'm like, why does this not say any record time? I had never hit record. <sighs> I didn't even record. I was literally done. I was about to be done and was looking to see hopefully it was at least 15 minutes. Girl and guys, I just, <laughs> this has not been my day. This has been a crabby, crabby day. Y'all know I've been complaining about my YouTube stuff because it's all up. It's just being stupid. But let me redo this whole review. Oh my, this is going to take, I just can't, girl. Anyway, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and become a Jaybird, y'all. I just got to get back through it. Let's start from the beginning again. Because um, I don't feel like going through all my little spiel stuff. But follow me on Instagram, J underscore Lee's underscore corner. The link is in the description box. Uh, I cannot believe, bro, I, I, I just sat here and was talking for a good 10, 15 minutes. And because I looked at the time and I didn't see, and that's what I get for not having my glasses on. That is what I get for trying to not have my glasses on. Because I would have seen that she'd said nothing. The whole time, I would have because I kept looking, but because I, I could, you know, it's blurry when I. <sighs> I'm eating some water when I'm done. Okay. Team Mom OG, Season 8, Episode 3. Okay, and it's called, you know, Blessings Not Baggage. <sighs> I had some good jokes and everything. And y'all know you can't just redo stuff. Girl, I got to be on times too. Anyway, let's start with Kate and Tyler. Kate and Tyler had their baby. You know, real sweet and simple. Um, You know, this is their third child. And, you know, they were talking about how they wanted, you know, with the first kid. You know, they had the, the camera crew was in the room. The parents was in the room. Everyone was in the room. For Nova, their second child, they were like, you know, only, I think maybe just Kate's mom was there. And, you know, so they were like, you know, for this time, you know, in the room, we just want, you know, just us to, like, no cameras, just us. Um, they call Butch because they want Butch to be there because, you know, Butch, of course, stays out of state. And when they call Butch to say, you know, we want you here for your grandchild's birth because, again, Butch has never been present for any of his grandchildren's birth. That includes Tyler's sister and Tyler's children. Um, so because he's clean and sober now, they're hoping he can make it for the birth. And so when they call, he said, well, I don't have no money. Like I have like maybe 40 bucks, so I can't afford to get there. And so Tyler said, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'll pay to get you here. I'm going to keep looking at the clock to make sure that it's still going. Um, I'll pay your flight and stuff to get. Like if you, if you want to come, we will pay for you to come here. Oh uh, yeah, I want to come. Of course I want to come. I want to be there, you know, blah, 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 blah. So... Kate goes in labor. Kate goes in labor overnight. They only had, like, you know, a homemade video because, you know, they didn't want any cameras there. So she went in labor, like, maybe 5 o'clock in the morning. So they was, you know, rush, rush, rushing. And Tyler was on his phone recording. And, you know, okay, got the bag. Got the bag. Okay. Oh, what's, where's Nova? Got to get Nova. Nova, we have to go. She's like, what's wrong? Is something wrong with the baby? Mom, what's wrong with your baby? She's like, nothing, Nova. It's okay. We're just going. Nova's cute. She's a little terror. Sometimes she's a little crabby as a kid, but you know what I'm saying? But she's adorable. She is adorable. I love the little girl, even though she, she's so loud sometimes. Anyway, so they get to the hospital. She has the baby. You know, she brings up how she only had to push like twice. You know, she's like, she was out within like five minutes. It was really easy this time. Um, she brings up how Carly was her, mo was her most difficult birth. She was in labor for, like, I, I forgot how many hours. Um, with that being her first child. And she's like, you know, this is, you know, birthing babies are, it's the most disgusting and the most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> and she brings up, but once the baby's out, you forget about all the disgustingness and the, and the pain that it is pushing the baby out your vagina. Um, and that's great. I think the baby's name was, is it Veda or Vita? I can't pronounce it the right way. I don't, is it, what a V or an N? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, the baby's born. Okay, but Butch never came. Butch did not return their texts. He didn't return their calls. You know, Kate was like, you know, the ball's in your court. Like, we're going to pay you to come here, but he just would not reply to them. He wasn't replying to Kate, to Tyler, 
to Tyler's mom. I'm trying to put my hand in my pocket just so I don't punch my computer in the face for having me talk all that damn time and it wasn't recording. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, but again, he ignored everyone's texts or whatever. So, you know, they bring the baby home and they're happy, happy, happy that she's born. And she's a cute little patootie. She's a cute, little cutie patootie. Little cutie patootie, little baby. And, you know, they're Kate and Tyler are sitting and talking or whatever. Just about Butch not being there. And Tyler's mom was there. Was it Tyler's mom or Kate? Tyler's mom um, was there. And they, we did see footage from the hospital. And, like, Kate's dad came down there. You know, both their moms. I think, you know, their stepdads or whatever. Everyone but Butch. Okay, his, I think his sister came down too. Everyone but Butch came down. And, he, and no one really heard from him. They know he okay. He, he up there getting high again. He back on that shit. Okay? So... Um, but talking to his mom, you know, he like, you know, I can't believe he didn't do it, but, you know, he's a drug addict, like, right, what, what gonna do? And the mom, like, you know, I sent him a text, you know, and I told him I can't, like, I can't even be friends, like, I can't even have him in my, in my life anymore, even though they're not together. But she read the text that she sent to him where she basically said, like, you know what? You disappointed my child. And I know what disappointment looks like on my child. And you did that to him. So for that reason alone, I can't deal with you anymore. Like, I just don't want you are out of my life. I wish you the best in life. But, you know, I'm just washing my hands of you. I've known you since I was 15. And, you know, I guess maybe I never really knew you because, you know, you keep disappointing our children. And just, I'm like, that's really, really bad. And, you know, Tyler brings up a good point. So, you know, she's always chose something over the kid. Like, he's always chose something over it. Like, he used to get high, go to jail. Like, it is what it is. So, that part was sad. Mm, so sad. But I'm happy they have another baby. And I hope Kate does not suffer from postpartum. I hope she's able to have a healthy post-baby life. You know what I'm saying? Cause she's had it hard both times she had kids. Um, Macy is really, really easy too. Macy's son, um, Maverick, they think he has a speech impediment, you know, cause he's stuttering over certain, wor- certain words. I think the kid like two, maybe three. Nah, I know he's not with three. I don't think he is. He's the youngest. And there's some words he just stutters over. So they're like, you know, what if it's something crazy? Like, let me just Google it. And I'm like, you should never Google anything <laughs> medically related like just don't do it like just go see a doctor because if you google anything like if you google my tongue hurt oh you got syphilitis you got bronchitis your tongue gonna fall out you got tuberculosis like it's always something like this extremely crazy like oh my neck hurts oh you probably have cancer in your ass or oh your neck hurt oh it probably means that your vertebrae is gonna break off like oh your neck hurt oh it probably means that your titty finna fall off it's always something crazy that you just don't think of and it makes you worry even more so you know <laughs> taylor was like you know what let's just go to a you know a doctor and see what's, what's going on and and they um go see a doctor who you know test the baby out you know talk to him here and there and then like ask some questions and let the baby respond and he like you know i don't think it's like anything you know serious i think he's just young and he's just learning words and he's kind of stumbling a little bit but i don't think it's like an issue where he needs like therapy or like that like and it's like you know because what do you do if he stumbles well, we let him just sound the word out. And he's like, yeah, I don't think it's like a big issue. But I'm pretty sure they'll, you know, still follow up on it later on to see if he keeps doing it. But for right now, he's like, it's just, it's just not a serious, um, a not a serious thing. So, I'm like, that's going to be good. That's my sister, uh, Shay, is texting me. <laughs> so... Other than that, um, we see Mackenzie and Ryan's parents. You know, Ryan's parents saying how, you know, of course, of course Ryan is doing 30, 90 days in jail. And they bring up how when he was sentenced, like, they didn't, like, cry or it wasn't hard for them to just, like, oh, okay. Because they're like, you know, it is what it is. We can't change it. And he just has to deal with, you know, going to, like, go to jail, bro. Like, it ain't nothing we can do. You know, they bring up how they would not visit him in jail at all, you know, they like, we would never go to a jail to visit, like, period, like, you know, that's just not somewhere we want to be, I don't, I don't disagree with them, I think 
if you want to visit somebody in there, you can. But I don't see anything wrong with parents. Like, you know, you're a grown man, dog. Like, we not visiting you in, for what? <laughs> I think especially if he's only doing 90 days. I think if he was, like, in prison for, like, life, they may change their mind or whatever. But I don't think this is like, oh, let's go see how he's doing. Like, sit your ass down for 90 days and we'll talk to you later. Um, they, the dad brings up how Mackenzie's having a hard time with things. And, you know, she had a bad day the other day. Y'all know I can't, I don't feel bad for Mackenzie simply because of how she would talk about and speculate that Macy was kind of the reason that Ryan was having issues and it's it just bull crap. And Shay, I'm going to grab your stuff. Oh, okay. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. You know, I'm trying to... Okay. Thank you for what you're sending me. But I'm like, it's like, oh, no. Okay. So, again, I don't feel... <laughs> I don't feel bad for Mackenzie at all. Um, because of just of how she talked about and treated... Um, Macy. So, Mackenzie's sitting with, like, me with a friend or whatever, like, oh, you know, the whole time, every time Ryan's been arrested, I've always been there and seen it so hard, you know, you know, I'm a single mom because he's always locked up, you know, it's just so sad. It's, I don't get no fucks. None at all, because the whole time, because my thing is, you are now going through what Macy went through. The only difference is, Ryan is in jail, and he can't be there. So he has t kind of sort of a reason as to why he's not there. But with Macy, he, there was no reason for him not to be involved in Bentley's life. Like, there was no jail. He wasn't in jail before. You know what I'm saying? He was just not there. So uh, it's just so people don't get how hard it is to see Ryan go to jail. Girl, bye. Like, you blame Macy for all the Ryan's mess up. So what's your, what's your, what's your, what is it now? But yeah, I don't feel bad for Mackenzie. I don't. I feel like she's getting what's due to her. I feel like you reap what you sow. And you just talked about Macy and blames her for all the Ryan's not being around. And now you are Macy. You are Macy when she first had Bentley. And Ryan wasn't around. And it was hard. And she, at that point in time, was trying to make it, not excuses, but she was trying to see, oh, well, you know, he's this, he's that. And she was trying to, like, have him involved. And he wouldn't do it. And now Ryan just keeps getting high and keeps getting arrested and keeps doing things so that he's not around. So, Mackenzie, you get what you give. And I don't really care. Um, Amber wasn't much. She's in L.A. doing press for the show. She's... She hates L.A. traffic, you know what I'm saying? Um, Andrew drank some drink that made him have to sh either He either had to poop or piss. I don't know which one. He pulled over in the parking garage and did one of the two. Um, and we all know people say how bad L.A. traffic is, but, I mean, it is what it is. And somewhere where he said I like, was 20 minutes away, it took them, like, two hours. I, <laughs> I could not do it. Um, we then have, but well, she kept saying how, oh, I want to meet up. Wish I and Corey because Corey, you know, says something about me and I don't like it. You know, he Corey says something like in respect to Amber. T it was about Amber when she quit the show, how she couldn't take whatever. He said, you know, but she know what she signed up for. So, like, if she's, she's quitting the show, that she don't know what she signed up for. And so she's like, I, that's just disrespectful. No, it's not. I, I get exactly what he meant. You signed up for a show. You signed up for a show, and you know what it entails, but you're complaining about what it entails. And we really just want you to ignore the bullshit. Because if, if Amber ignores the bullshit, she will be fine. Amber can't ignore the bullshit. Amber feeds into the negativity that people post about her. And I get that can happen every once in a while, but when you know that your mental state can't handle that, you don't need to be on social media. Period. Okay? Period. Just don't don't read the comments. Just don't because it's gonna drive you crazy. So you know she called Cheyenne and said I want to meet up. Oh great, we can meet up. You know for dinner or whatever. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Cheyenne was just like, oh, now I'm finally saying Cheyenne again. Um, Cheyenne has a new boy to it, a new boyfriend or whatever. Some dude she met. I think his name was either Mark or Michael. Something with him. 
She went to the party, and now they're kicking it. And he doesn't live in her state or whatever. He lives in, like, Maryland. I don't, was it Maryland? Was it Baltimore? Baltimore. What the wretch? Okay, we'll stop. Girl, focus. <laughs> um, but she likes this dude. You know what I'm saying? He has a, oh, he has a man bun. You know, I like man bun. I like man. Who does out the blue likes man bun? But like, girl, Chinese is different. And she's like, yeah, so we dating. I just bit my tongue. Um, Corey and her are hanging out, and when they're, like, walking with the baby, and the baby, like, falls a little bit, so Cheyenne go, go, goes to grab the baby, and her phone falls, and so while Cheyenne was grabbing the baby, Corey picked her phone up, and at the time, the dude was texting, and so he seen the dude's name, and she had, like, a whole bunch of kissy faces and, like, heart emojis, meaning that's her boo. And so he was like, oh, you got a new man, huh? Your, your boyfriend Mark texting you, ha, 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 ha. Don't worry about that. Like, whatever's none of your business. And she's like, oh, my God. Corey didn't say it like, oh, I'm mad. You know what I'm saying? Corey, I'm like, girl, he don't care. <laughs> like, he doesn't care. Um, Now Corey says I have a boy. Yes, girl, he don't care. Like, Corey saw it. Girl, again, he don't care. So, Corey meets up with his friend or whatever. Like, yeah, she ain't got a boyfriend or whatever. I'm so happy because if she's dating someone, like, now she'll leave me alone about me dating Taylor. Like, and it can make my life easier. Corey really just wants Cheyenne to be happy, but he also does not want her just messing with him because she don't like Taylor. I don't know what the big issue is with her and Taylor. She makes it seem as if Taylor be online just dogging her, and, you know, why are they always so public with things, and why, um, you know, she was posting saying how, you know, supposedly her and Corey was messing around while we were filming the show, but I'm like, that's not, at, you had a boyfriend, so who cares? You had a whole boyfriend when y'all were filming that show. So if Corey was messing around with her, who cares? And that's on Corey. That's not something for you to be mad at her about. She could have been talking to him. Period. But she, that's her trying to make it seem like, girl, you are. T you have a whole daughter that you have to worry about. Who's sick? Why do you give any fucks about a girl who said she and Corey was messing? Girl, I don't care. And, she, and that's why Cheyenne gives me a whole headache. A whole headache. Because Cheyenne is a bitter, petty baby mama. And the only time she isn't one is if she has a boyfriend. And, well, not with that. Because even with, well, no, whenever Corey's with somebody else, she's, she's bitter she, and it's stupid. So, what else happened? Um, I think that was really it. Because they went out to dinner with Amber and, 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 and Andrew. And on the way there, you know, Corey's like, you know, I want you to know that I'm happy that you met somebody. I'm I'm happy for that. And I'm hoping now that you are willing to meet with um, Lauren. She's like, for what? Like, wh why? And he said, whatever y'all, you need to talk to her about. Like, whatever it is that, that aggravates you about her, like, have that discussion so that I can start having her around writer. I thought you were okay, well, you know, not, you know, being a single dad. He's like, well, for the first, it was cool, it was cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, I want companionship. But I'm like, he wants somebody to, you know, have a life with. Who wants to be a single parent forever? No one. No one does. So it's like, girl, stop. Cheyenne really be holding out hope that he'll just be with her, and he won't. I don't, he don't want you, but he respects you, and he loves you as his daughter's mom, and he wants the best for you, and I wish you could want the best for him and not be petty and bitter. And not saying that she's, like, a mean-spirited, but, you know, she just doesn't seem like she wants Corey to be happy. And I get she may not like Taylor, but who cares? Like, get your own man and just move on because you don't have to be with Taylor. You don't. And it's just a waste of time for you to care about Taylor. Like, girl, you are a beautiful, have a beautiful daughter. You have a a, 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 um, a responsible baby daddy. Well, it's Corey, so responsible is, you know, it, it depends. Um, but, you know, no, I don't think he would have anybody, you know what I'm saying, you know, flaky around the kid. And, you know, so she's like, well, I'll, maybe we can talk or whatever. At the dinner with Amber, you know, Corey like, oh, so do you sign your <laughs> Corey like I'ma aggravate her aggravate her as much as much as I can. And so when they sit down, he like, Oh, so did you sign your team mom contract? <laughs> I was like, Corey is stupid. And so she's like, Well, let me tell you about that. You know, let me let you I'm like, here she go with the let me check you about something. 
And while I get what she said, oh, you know, being on the show for so long, you know what I'm saying? And it's only so much we can take and blah, 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 blah. I get what she mean, how a lot comes with being on the show. But I also feel like what Corey said wasn't a big deal for her to, like, be her feelings to be hurt. I think what he said had some truth to it. She just took it the wrong way. He didn't mean, like, oh, it doesn't matter if people dog you out as a mom. What he means is you on here, no one will come for this show, and you are complaining about it when you have a lot of perks from the show, too. So you know what you signed up for. And if you don't like it, then you should quit. But don't quit because you're crying about it. Quit because, you know what, I want a private life and I don't want to deal with the bull crap. So I'm going to leave the show because I, I just don't want to deal with it. Not be like, I'm so upset. I'm crying and I want some attention for the hate that I get. And I feel like each person on that show gets hate. Yeah, I get hate on here and I ain't got... Not nowhere near as much as, you know, fanfare that fair enough, no, fair enough, that Amber and them have. But I feel like, girl, it's not, it ain't that deep. So they squash it. Corey apologized, you know, for hurting her feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't mean to do that, so it's good. And, you know, that was really it. We do see her talk to her mama, Cheyenne and them. Her mama, her sister, and her daddy. And when she, like, Corey wants me to meet Lauren so we can talk because he eventually wants her to be around Ryder. Her mama and her sister kept rolling their eyes. I'm like, oh, so Cheyenne fucked up because of y'all. Okay. And when she's like, could you imagine if Lauren had to change her diapers? And the dad said, that may happen. And the fact that the mama, Cheyenne, and the sister rolled their eyes. I'm like, so if Corey and the girl dating and Corey goes to the store and maybe Lauren there and the baby shit, you don't want her to change. I mean, I just feel like you should want the best person. You should want the best person with your baby father, baby mama, who will treat your child amazingly well. You would, you, I wouldn't want to say his girlfriend came, came like my kid diaper. Why would you say that? I don't, I think that's dumb. I can see if a guy say, I don't want your boyfriend changing my daughter's diapers because I don't know that dude. I get that because that happens. I get when some girls would tell a dude, I don't want your girl with my son. I get that. But I don't see a thing if um, the girlfriend is like changing the baby's diaper with the person there. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's a big issue. Once you get to know that person, I think changing the diaper is, is easy. Now, I'm not going to say that Corey should leave the writer with the girlfriend and like be gone all day somewhere. But I don't see a big issue if eventually a year down the line, if, and that's the thing, the girl won now, so she, she may not even be in parents by the time she meet the girl. She may not, but she may need to, need to change her pull up. It's just bullshit to me. Anyway, y'all, that was the whole show. I'm done. Peace. <laughs>